see on your monitor. This sprue fits extremely passively in this canal. There is absolutely no resistance whatsoever. So at this point, I'm going to remove the sprue and I'm going to Vaseline that canal lightly. Have it right there. I have made every attempt to distribute the Vaseline equally along the dentinal walls of the canal space. Uh, once I do that, the next step is to begin the lining of the acrylic post, the para post. So the first thing I'm going to do is wet the side of the post with the GC pattern resin monomer. And for that, I'll use a um, micro brush. Can you see me doing that? Mm -hmm. oh. The hand is good. Yeah, it's just the hand. It goes right into it. Now that this side of the plastic sprue has been wet with the monomer, I'm going to salt and pepper monomer and polymer in very, very small quantities and then try to capture the impression of the post space in small increments. Yeah. <laughs> Is better now? Yes, much better. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you for <laughs> bringing that to my attention. I made that mistake last week. Just remind the students that um, in all times, the plastic pots should go all the way to the length of the pool space. I said that about 30 times in lecture this morning. The plastic sprue at this point has been lined with the GC monomer and polymer. I'm going to allow that to frost up just a little bit before placing that in the canal space. And when I place that in the canal space, we want to be sure that that sprue pattern is extended all the way down as far as it'll go. In other words, touching gutta percha, the apical five millimeters of gutta percha. Perfect. The sprue pattern is now in the canal. The head of the sprue is at the coronal end, and there's some excess GC pattern resin polymer and monomer right at the access opening to that canal, right here. We're going to alternately remove and replace, remove and replace that sprue pattern so that we don't lock into any undercuts that might be present in the canal space. Shortly, I'll be adding a second increment of monomer and polymer to that uh, canal, uh, to that shaft, and replacing it into the canal. And uh, later, I will examine the surface to make sure there are no shiny areas, which will indicate that contact has not been made with the dental walls of the canal space. If you look very carefully 
at the sprue pattern, you'll see a little void on one end of the um, shaft of that pattern. I'll point that out to you just right now. You want me to hold the microphone for you? Okay, that would be great. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. There's a little void right here. That's an area where I probably did not contact the dental walls of the canal. So I'm going to paint some monomer and polymer into that space and reinsert that into the canal. I wish I made that money. Let's reinsert that into the canal space to see if we can capture the internal anatomy as accurately as we can. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, if there are any undercuts, you will bypass those undercuts if you alternately remove and replace the post before the acrylic polymerizes fully. Now, ladies and gentlemen, one of the biggest errors that dentists make is in assuming that the very apical portion of the post has contacted dentinal wall. That's the area that fits, in general, least accurately. So at the very end, at this point, uh, I'm going to add some monomer and polymer to this area so they can capture any uh, detail in the uh, anatomical space at the very apical area of our post, or our future post. I don't think they can see that in the monitor. In the, in the video it looks fine, but okay. I'm adding monomer and polymer to the very tip of my uh, plastic sprue. I'll allow that to frost up now prior to inserting that into the canal. Perfect. So here's fine. So we have a wider Ah. Uh, yeah. That's just about frosted up at this point. So we'll reinsert that into the canal. Terrible as a microphone holder. <laughs> Try to keep as much of the coronal acrylic uh, as possible away from the uh, axial walls where we're interested in getting our ferrule effect and certainly away from the finish line. Uh, you're only interested in uh, covering the contra bevel and the flat portion when constructing the core. So as you can see now, the excess, excess material that is protruding from the canal space essentially will be fashioned later on uh, when we make the core portion of our post core.
I am alternately removing and replacing the sprue pattern. I'm beginning to feel a little bit of resistance, no doubt because there might be some minor undercuts in this canal space. So to bypass those undercuts, I continue to remove, replace, remove, and replace the GC pattern from the canal. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, I've captured the internal anatomy of my post space. And how do I know that? Well, one of the reasons is that I don't have any particularly shiny areas uh, along that, um, the length of that pattern. And secondly, I um, don't notice any additional voids. The next step is to build up the core portion of my pattern. I need to call my wife. Do you want me to stop it? You wouldn't mind. Okay. As I said, at this point, the uh, post portion of the post core has been completed. And you can see that right here. Uh, I'll replace this in the canal. And now I'll begin to add in small increments the material that I'll need to build up the core portion of the post core. So once again, it might be a good idea to just wet the coronal portion, the coronal portion of this um, sprue pattern with some monomer, just to ensure that the monomer and polymer mix will adhere or bond much better. I've taken a small quantity of material and added it to the sprue first. And no doubt what happens in the beginning is the material will begin to slump. So as you're adding, you're also using your brush, brush to shape the material as it slumps. Use a dry brush and wipe it off. Continuing to build up Now remember ultimately there's only so much that you can do using this brush the shape ultimately That you require that is of an ideal tooth preparation will have to be accomplished with a high-speed handpiece and a diamond bar so all I'm doing right now is trying to get a basic shape going. The material, of course, continues to slump, as you have no doubt already discovered. Yes, I would, but you don't have to go on the video. You just can stop it. The post portion is right here. The core portion is right here, although unfinished. And right as the post joins the core, you'll see a registration in the GC pattern resin of the contrabevel, right in this area. We're going to remove the excess post material, or the excess core material, I should say, of the GC pattern resin that we've formed.
The next step would be the actual preparation of the core itself. And the idea here is to fashion that as closely as possible to an ideal tooth preparation.